Jimmy, it's time to medicate your fish. All right, do they need that? So a great question. Why are we running medication on fish, which when we look at them, they look healthy. They don't seem that they have the disease that this medication treats against. Why do we do that? It's called prophylactically treating your fish. You're treating them against a disease that they may or may not have. In this case, we're gonna use CKM scupramine, that's copper treatment. We're going after two main diseases, ick and marine velvet. So these are the diseases that I'm most concerned about getting into a saltwater tank. I had velvet in my tank, it wiped out nearly all my fish. Mm. Ick is something that's not as lethal as velvet, but ideally you would not have it in your tank. The thing about both of these diseases are there's plenty of documented cases of fish not showing any disease, of signs of the diseases, but the fish still have the disease. Because if the fish has the disease, ick is gonna look like pinhead size, white dots all over the fish. Marine velvet, it looks like the fish got hit with powdered sugar. And the sad thing about marine velvet is it moves very fast. In a way, you're lucky that if you see it on the fish, then you know why your fish are dying. What usually happens is your fish just fall off for no apparent reason. So just because you don't see it on the fish doesn't mean it's not on their gills. Now you and I and most everyone watching these videos is not qualified to take the fish, clip off some of the gills and look at it underneath a microscope. So if we're prophylactically treating them, how long does this take to know that, it, that it's done whatever it needs to do? So that question is 14 days when you get the medication up to its full strength. You gotta understand the life cycle of the disease. Both of these diseases are parasitic diseases. They need a host and they live on the fish. Part of their life cycle is on the fish feeding, then they fall off, they hit a hard surface like rock or glass or PVC pipe, anything where they can bond to. They form a cap over themselves, they start multiplying, then it bursts and the little guys swim out and attack the fish and the process starts all over again. So you're only gonna be affected with the medication while the disease is in its free swimming stage. While it's on the fish, while it's encrusted on the hard surface, this stuff is not gonna be helpful. So okay. we have to run this for at least 14 days, but there's a catch to that. And it has to do with how you safely move this, use this medication. Because some people will say certain types of fish are sensitive to copper medication and you shouldn't use that. That's true, like sharks, eels, we don't wanna treat them with copper. That being said, I've had plenty of success using cupramine properly on fish that even are seemingly sensitive. Dragonets, pipefish, tangs, I have no problem using that when it's done properly and I have some tricks to that, which I'll talk to you about. So is it a daily treatment? You said for 14 days, so I'm right. gonna be doing something daily? No, we're adding it to the tank, we're getting it to a concentration, and we're maintaining that concentration for 14 days and then we can remove the medication from the water. Okay, so that's what my test kit is? Right. So if we're using cupramine, there's a couple important things we gotta have in place first. You gotta have the cupramine. I like to use this copper. This is cupramine from Seachem. You want the Seachem test kit because this can test effectively for this type of copper. For okay. different types of copper, you want the test kit from the same manufacturer of the medication. Then we want our salinity in the tank where we're testing to be 1.025, 35, 34, 36 ppt, normal reef tank salinity. You don't want to be hypo salinity when you're using copper. Hypo meaning low. Correct. The last piece of this is you got to remove any chemical filtration. These filter bags that come with the hang on back filter, they have activated carbon in there, they'll pull out the medication. So if okay. you have these pads, you got to pull them out. Okay? So we have all that in place. And then we start the slow ramp of our copper. We get it to the recommended concentration. 14 days, then you can do a large water change, put your filter pad back in there. What I like to do afterwards is continue to watch the fish, make sure they're eating, and then they're done with their quarantine. All right. So doing a copper treatment, that's not gonna shorten my quarantine time. I can't go, oh, okay, I took care of these two things in these 14 days. Now I can put them into my display tank after 14 days. Right. One of my success for using cupramine is that I bring it out very slowly. We wanna to get to an ending concentration of 0.5 uh, milligrams a milliliter. So, but we don't wanna go from zero to the full concentration. So we okay. start slow. And it says that right on the bottle. It says that right on the okay. bottle. And I even go more conservative, especially with sensitive fish. Put in half the recommended dose the first day, 
you know it's not going to be enough. It may not even register on the test kit, but that's okay. We're starting slow. Next day, run your tests. Add the rest of that recommended dose. Come up slowly. I have no problem coming up slow. We get to the recommended concentration. We maintain that for 14 days. We're going to test every other day along the way. And then when it's over, we can take it down. Here's how dosing copper would look from a number standpoint. The recommended dose for my quarantine tank is four mils on the first day. Day one, I'm gonna dose half that amount, so two milliliters. Then I'm gonna wait 24 hours. Day two, run my copper test. I know I won't be anywhere close to the recommended concentration of 0.5 milligrams of milliliters, and that's okay. We're going slow. Then add the other half of the recommended dose. Wait 24 hours. Day three, test. We still won't be near the recommended concentration and that's okay. Add the full recommended daily dose amount. Then wait 24 hours. Day four, test. Based on the results, add the recommended daily dose if you're far off from the 0.5 milligrams of milliliters that we're aiming for, or half the recommended daily dose if you're close. Wait 24 hours. Day five, test and repeat as necessary. Okay, Mark, so once I get my copper started and I get it up to full concentration, what kinds of things should I look for that would I would maybe stop it? A couple things. One, I would also be very attuned to these things, same things when you're ramping up your concentration. Okay. I want the fish eating and eating well before I start. If they stop eating, I'm going to stop the comp copper concentration. I may even do a water change, pull it out, mm. see if they go back to food to see if they're sensitive to the copper. Okay. Same thing if I have it on full concentration, if they stop eating, okay, maybe they don't eat that day. I'm not saying stop immediately. The next day, if they still don't eat, they seem happy, you know, they're swimming around as normal, they're not acting dull, then I might pull out the copper, get them back onto food, and try again. All right, so I'm basically watching the fish behavior, see if their behavior changes and if their eating changes. How about the water? Am I going to do any other testing other than the copper? Do I need to do... It wouldn't hurt to do an ammonia test or a nitrate test. Fish are, it takes a lot really to affect them with nitrate, even with ammonia. You gotta have a fairly high concentration for a long amount of time. But if you see stuff really starting to climb, you can do a water change and then you can add back your copper as quick as possible. So if they're at full concentration, let's say you did a half water change, you can add back in what you need to get it back up right away. The other nice thing about this test is it includes a reference because it's a color test. You look at a, the color that the test comes oh, out in. Oh, you slide across and you see it? Yeah, okay. but it includes a reference solution for full concentration of copper. So you're like, well, I don't, I don't really know on the slider card if that's it. You just run the same test with a reference solution. Then you can look at them next to one another and go, that's where I'm supposed to be. Am I next to this? And you can compare them right there. Okay. Once you've done 14 days of the recommended concentration of the cupramine or the copper, then by the books, those fish are clean of marine velvet and ick, and they could go in your display tank. Okay, so if I got new fish and I started them right away on this, marine velvet and ick are your main concerns why we quarantine. Mm -hmm. So you're saying I could, if I got new fish, I could quarantine only two weeks? You could if you want. Like per se, if we're just going against those diseases, yes. Look, I'm going to give it a week to get the fish in, get them comfortable, and then ramp them up. Okay. But as soon as you've done your 14 days at full concentration, if you wanted, you could pull okay. them out and put them in your So tank. what I hear you saying is a week getting a meeting and then start the copper treatment. So a realistic is still a three week. Probably quarantine is the best idea. And if you want to keep them for another week afterwards just to observe them. All right. Well, I just get excited to get them in the big tank. Well, I, so, I mean, this, this is in my game room and I don't come in here. Yeah. I just come in here to feed them. They don't get looked at very much. So, you know, I'm more excited to get them in. I don't want them in my quarantine tank. So I, but yeah, let's do the copper treatment. All right, we'll get it started. Let's pull this filter out of the back mm. and do a water change and start up on this concentration. All right. 